Hitler was incompetent and lazy, and his Nazi government was an absolute clown show. Look, I know what you're thinking. Putting Hitler in a book about the terrible mistakes we've made as a species isn't exactly the boldest move ever. Oh wow, never heard of him, what a fascinating historical nugget is something you're probably not saying right now. But beyond him being, obviously, a genocidal maniac, there's an aspect to Hitler's rule that kind of gets missed in our standard view of him. Even if popular culture has long enjoyed turning him into an object of mockery, we still tend to believe that the Nazi machine was ruthlessly efficient, and that the great dictator spent most of his time, well, dictating things. So it's worth remembering that Hitler was actually an incompetent, lazy egomaniac and his government was an absolute clown show. In fact, this may even have helped his rise to power, as he was consistently underestimated by the German elite. Before he became chancellor, many of his opponents had dismissed him as a joke for his crude speeches and tacky rallies. Even after elections had made the Nazis the largest party in the Reichstag, people still kept thinking that Hitler was an easy mark, a blustering idiot who could easily be controlled by smart people. Hitler was incredibly lazy. According to his aide Fritz Wiedmann, even when he was in Berlin he wouldn't get out of bed until after 11 a.m., and wouldn't do much before lunch other than read what the newspapers had to say about him, the press cuttings being dutifully delivered to him by Dietrich. He was obsessed with the media and celebrity, and often seems to have viewed himself through that lens. He once described himself as the greatest actor in Europe, and wrote to a friend, I believe my life is the greatest novel in world history. In many of his personal habits he came across as strange or even childish, he would have regular naps during the day, he would bite his fingernails at the dinner table, and he had a remarkably sweet tooth that led him to eat prodigious amounts of cake and put so many lumps of sugar in his cup that there was hardly any room for the tea. He was deeply insecure about his own lack of knowledge, preferring to either ignore information that contradicted his preconceptions, or to lash out at the expertise of others. He hated being laughed at, but enjoyed it when other people were the butt of the joke, he would perform mocking impressions of people he disliked. But he also craved the approval of those he disdained, and his mood would quickly improve if a newspaper wrote something complimentary about him. Little of this was especially secret or unknown at the time. It's why so many people failed to take Hitler seriously until it was too late, dismissing him as merely a half-mad rascal or a man with a beery vocal organ. In a sense, they weren't wrong. In another, much more important sense, they were as wrong as it's possible to get. Hitler's personal failings didn't stop him having an uncanny instinct for political rhetoric that would gain mass appeal, and it turns out you don't actually need to have a particularly competent or functional government to do terrible things. Stabbing each other in an attempt to either win his approval or avoid his attention altogether, depending on what mood he was in that day. There's a bit of an argument among historians about whether this was a deliberate ploy on Hitler's part to get his own way, or whether he was just really, really bad at being in charge of stuff. Dietrich himself came down on the side of it being a cunning tactic to sow division and chaos, and it's undeniable that he was very effective at that. We tend to assume that when something awful happens there must have been some great controlling intelligence behind it. It's understandable, how could things have gone so wrong, we think, if there wasn't an evil genius pulling the strings? The downside of this is that we tend to assume that if we can't immediately spot an evil genius, then we can all chill out a bit because everything will be fine. But history suggests that's a mistake, and it's one that we make over and over again. Many of the worst man-made events that ever occurred were not the product of evil geniuses. Instead they were the product of a parade of idiots and lunatics, incoherently flailing their way through events, helped along the way by overconfident people who thought they could control them.